Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you will receive alerts when there are new episodes. Go get it. That's what I tell them. I've been grinding for so long, I wake up and chase my goals, I go out and I go get it, how to code, that's all I know, I don't succeed, then I don't breathe, success, what does it mean, if I conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream, dig deep, go out and get it, success chronicles, compete until it's finished, success chronicles, go take care of your business, success chronicles, it's deeper than just winning, success chronicles. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. And today we're here with Dr. Steve, a great guy uh, doing some awesome things. And I'm so thankful to have him on this episode of the Success Chronicles. So first, thanks so much for taking the time to interview with the Success Chronicles. Hey, it's a delight. Thanks for having me on the show. Yes, sir. Well, let's dive into it. I know off air, uh, we talked about some really cool things as far as your journey and your family and some of those things. But if you don't mind uh, you know, sharing some of that about your your path uh, with the audience and, and what it is you do now. Sure thing. I mean, I had the great advantage ship to come from a family uh, of some privilege. My father was a physician and I had the joy of watching him um, pursue his profession Never thought I'd end up in medicine. You know, it's like when you're a kid, man, I, I want to do anything except for what my dad did until I really started to study and reflect upon it. And I decided that medicine was what I wanted to do. More specifically, I wanted to do family medicine. I wanted primary care. And I always said that I was more interested in my patient than the disease. And I felt there was a lot I could give. And I felt that, and I still feel this way, that primary care before disease strikes, when you're healthy, that's the time to really focus energy. And the challenge, of course, and the reason why, you know, one of the things that's driven me in my profession, so I'm a, a board certified family doctor. I went to a college at Tufts University and then attended Philadelphia Osteopathic Medical School. I went in the army, did my residency at Fort Benning uh, Army Hospital. Um, it was a wonderful time, great opportunity, had an army scholarship, thank God, paid for my uh, my education. I did my uh, my residency training and then uh, served at Fort Belvoir in Northern Virginia. So it was a fantastic exposure to a broad array. You know, when I was growing up, Chip, I'm from Rhode Island. Shoot, I thought the entire world was Italian Catholic. <laughs> what did I know? <laughs> and you get out there and you realize, hey, it's a big planet out there. And uh, you're around really bright, motivated people. So I did that and um, you know, did my primary care gig. Even then, I began to recognize that what we're doing in medicine is not meeting the need, that we're setting about waiting for things to break and then running in circles, trying to pace them together again. And I came to an early appreciation that I couldn't make people well by drugging them. You know, I'm an osteopathic physician by choice. And uh, the founding uh, principles of osteopathic medicine are that the body has an enormous self-healing power. So you know, I told you off air, my, my parents were a bit nonconformist and uh, questions a lot of things. And so, so did I. You know, why are we the way we are? And medicine is, a, is an enormously wonderful, loving, but conformist profession. And you're okay as long as you do what everybody else is doing. But suppose, Chip, suppose what everybody else is doing is missing important details of keeping us well. And um, so can I, can I share this piece, man? I'm a, I'm there. I am. I'm a captain. I'm in the army. Get it. North Coast clinic, all by my lonesome, hanging out there, taking care of soldiers, 6 AM. And this major came to me desperate to lose weight. Cause they were going to throw him out of the army. You know, if you don't make weight in the military, they'll wash you out. Right. Right. Crazy. It's it just, you know, I want the dude, the big guy that can carry my wounded ass out of a mud hole. I don't need a little skinny guy that can run two miles. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they're bouncing these guys it made no sense to me, but, you know, that was it. So he was 18 years in, two years to get his, his um, pension. And he was desperate. And he said, Doc, you got to help me. You need to got to prescribe some medicine. You got to help me lose weight. I didn't know what to do. I wasn't taught this. I didn't know how to help people lose weight. I thought obesity was some kind of character flaw. Well, I studied it because 
I knew that that wasn't the case. You know, I, I had experience with motivated soldiers, young men and women in their prime struggling with this issue, their career on the line. So I became very much appreciative that there's a physiologic, there's a neurochemical, there's something going on here. So anyhow, I treated this guy, he, he made weight, he was eternally grateful, and a career was launched for me. And that career took me on a tangential path away from a lot of conventional treatment pathways. And we've developed over years a successful approach to treating weight loss and managing it empathically like the metabolic condition it is. So that was one piece that kind of launched me on a sort of a sidebar. And I've continued on that pathway ever since. That is good stuff. Uh, really neat. And before we go on, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for your service. You know, one, uh, for your service in the military, and then two, for your service as a doctor and what you do. And so, um, you know, I know from my background, my family, it's important to give service, right? It's important to take care of others. And, and we don't have to choose to do that, but it's a choice. And I'm so grateful that you chose to do that. So I want to make sure I tell you, thank you for that before we go on. Yeah, well, appreciate those comments. Yes, sir. Well, what are three things you've accomplished in your life that you're proud of? Okay, man, I, I only get to list three. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, right. I'll say you. Uh, <laughs> so in, in no particular order, <laughs> um, I would say uh, holding together my, my wondrous, boisterous, um, diverse family and, and being a, uh, a presence, a paternal presence to my children, my stepchildren. That's been a challenge and an enormous success defining it on my terms, right? I'm not the dad that's sitting there at every baseball game because I got other stuff going on. And then one part of that stuff really is um, the success of establishing this practice, intellectual medicine, was, uh, was an enormous risk and it was an enormous realization of a vision. And uh, so I would say launching intellectual medicine and having become a success. Um, and I would put in there the publishing, you know, the, the, the fiction novel I was very pleased with, the, um, the research articles that I've been able to produce, and, um, and also the books in the pipeline. So holding the family together, you know, it's, it's one thing to do what we do. But we all got to go home and, you know, there's there's trash to be taken out and there's like wives to be uh, to, to love and their children to raise. So achieving what we've done, you know, my wife and I and, and in my career. So, yeah, man, that, those are some of the big things. And um, they um, I guess the most exciting thing, the, the greatest achievement is the one we're going to do next. I love it. I love it. So good. And, you know, it takes it takes that balance as well. And, you know, and you talked about you know, the things that you were involved in early, you know, in your life and your career, and you're expected to be great in all of it. And what happens is we learn transferable skills that we, that will help us down the road in life through those experiences, but we don't know that. And that's why it's so important that we, you know, like you said, learn and look for the next thing, because that allows me to continue to have growth. I love that phrase, you know, the transferable skill, because you can take something from column A, put it to column B and create a new perspective on an old problem. And that kind of dynamic thinking is uh, is intellectual pursuit. You know, it's intellectualism and intellectualism. People misunderstand it. I think, you know, Chip, it's not how smart you are. It's not your SAT score. Right. It's how you view the world with a thirst for knowledge, with a curiosity, with you know, merging stuff together. Um, so yeah, man, that's, um, it's an important skill set to always be for me anyhow, right. For yes. my definition of success, for my definition of my life is to be looking at a new information and say, how can I apply it? Uh, so that drives the practice forward. That's awesome. And that, and that was going to be my next question is, is your definition of success? I mean, you yeah, know, man, you, you had a great journey, lots of things to be proud of. Um, yeah. you know, what, what's your definition of success? You know, I, I think it starts, um, we all have to ask the question philosophically, you know, what are we going to do with the short life we have? And how are we going to account for ourselves 
Um, so I have a weird exercise I like to do. I like to write my obituary periodically, <laughs> you know, just to see what would it be like when it's done. And I don't want it to read, you know, uh, no knock on golf, man, but I don't want to read. He was a great golfer. He loved the Red Sox. You know, my definition of, of success, right, is leaving a legacy of creative um, change, of innovation. That, you know, we're Americans by choice. Uh, we, we enter our, our professions by choice. And really, uh, for me, it's the opportunity to do something that maybe hasn't quite been done, you know, and to lift up other lives along the way. You know, I, I love the idea of being that uh, that player on the team that makes everybody else around them better. And as a doctor, it's it's my calling to make other people's lives better and yeah. you know, not just put out fires. So definition of success, if you can look around and realize that that the people that come in contact with you are better for the experience, that's pretty close. Come on. That's awesome. Well, I was going to say uh, now to the fun part, Doc, but it's all been fun for me. OK, yes. <laughs> but uh, what I want to do is I want to throw out uh, three words or phrases. And when I give you and I'll give you one at a time when I give them to you, if you don't mind just talking about what comes to mind or heart for you when you hear these words or phrases. You OK with that? I am. It sounds like fun. Let's get it. <laughs> all right. So the first one is living and learning living and learning um so i'm thinking about the frontier of ignorance um you know we always like to take confidence in what we know we always like to take um prestige in our fund of knowledge but i really admire people that look at what they know as being the edge of ignorance <laughs> and being humbled by what's in front of them you know, we're real guilty of this in medicine, Chip. We, what I call the arrogance of the moment. We think we have it figured out. And in reality, we're always primitive because the depth of knowledge in front of us is unlimited. So, yeah, man, that's what I'm seeing. I, that's what drives me. That's uh, my, my fear of what I don't know and the need to learn it fast so I can, I can apply it. Well, you know, um, I know I had two other words. But before we go on, I have one response. Um, in in what you just said and it's one word and that response is boom <laughs> <laughs> let's go yeah, i love it. it i love it all right so the the next the next word is intellectual spot on right um it is a it is a way of living it is a way of looking at the world it is at its core a healthy curiosity. You can't be an intellectual without an uh, unceasing curiosity, asking the questions about why, you know, how does that work? What makes a clock tick? You know, I have that thirst. That's intellectual. It's not, it's not your test score. It's not your degrees. It's not the college you went to. It's the thirst on knowledge. I mean, you could be you could be an intellectual high school graduate, um, digging ditches. You know, it's all up here. Uh, there are a lot of intellects and a lot of walks of life there. Some of them are behind bars. Some of them are checking out your groceries. You know, you never know what's happening up here yeah. because some of them just not ha didn't have that opportunity, you know, to have that pro forma um, structured education. So it's all about, it's all about the curiosity, folks. It's all about what you learn next. Mm. All right. So the last one, I will pause a little bit before we give you this one. This is a really good one here. So the last one is legacy. Wow. Um, so obviously, not obviously, legacy is um, how people will think of you when you're no longer there. What did you leave behind? Um, what effect did you have on the people that matter the most? What effect did you have on the people that you may not have thought you were having an effect on? You know, Chip, when you are crossing paths with somebody, you have no idea what impact your words will have, your body language will have, 
you don't know how thirsty that recipient is and how you might be the cup of water they need. So legacy to me is, is an opportunity with every encounter. And so hopefully when, you know, when we're gone, the folks, you know, the folks who we don't even have a recollection of having encountered will come away with that positive effect. And for me, anyhow, another piece of legacy is writing. You know, when you write stuff and you publish things, it is eternal. Um, you know, Twitter will evaporate. Tweets go away. Words vaporize. But that which is written stays with us. You know, it can be a journal. It can be um, a diary. It can be your musings and thoughts. It could be a letter to your kids. You know, and so folks, if you put pen and paper, you don't need to be a, you don't need to be a brilliant gifted writer. You just got to write stuff, and it will be embraced. It'll be part of your legacy. Um, my wife's real funny. You know, when she met me, Chip, my um, she looked at, at some of my writings because I had these books half written. She said, "You know, for a writer, you don't write very much." <laughs> and uh, she pushed me to really get it done. So it was, uh, yeah, it was. I like writing as part of legacy. Well, Doc, this has been a pleasure. Uh, if you don't mind, before we get off, share with the audience where they can go follow you and check you out and show you some love, get the books and show you some love with all of the amazing things you have going on. Well, thanks, Chip. Yeah, it's uh, Intellectual Medicine, Dr. Petteruti. And if they Google Intellectual Medicine, I do have a podcast. You know, the the core focus we have is on uh, treating and modifying the aging process itself. And that is a whole deep well that uh, I'm in the midst of finishing my book called The Anti-Aging Pyramid. And when it's completed, it will describe that which we can be doing to live to be 120 and stay young at the same time. So that's, I would say, uh, the thing that I will be proud of the most when it's done. So intellectual medicine, folks, you can follow what we do. I do um, a periodic podcast and, and blogs, and we have a website as well under the banner of intellectual medicine that uh, helps to educate people and uh, uses the internet to try to empower folks to take charge of their own health. Uh, don't wait around. Don't wait around for the next pill or the next surgery to bail you out, folks. Get ahead of the curve. I love it. Well, again, I just want to say thanks so much for taking the time to interview with the Success Chronicles. Truly appreciate it. And I wish you continued success. Hey, thanks, Coach. You too, brother. Keep it going. Yes, sir. <laughs> and thank you guys for checking out this episode. We'll see you next time. God bless. Go get it.